Hello, it's James and I'm back in the shop again. Today, we're gonna learn a little bit about the Opt Laser using Light Burn. Stay tuned. Well, today I thought I would take my first venture baby steps into the world of laser engraving. Um, about a month or two ago, I was asked by Opt Laser if they sent me their laser, would I do a review and would I be able to use it? So I said yes. Um, now, if you watched my previous video, which I will put a link in the description, if you watched my previous video, you saw me installing the CNC for newbie um, add-on, the upgrade to my X-Carve CNC machine. And at the same time, I added the Opt Laser. So I wanna begin by saying, up until a week or two ago, I knew nothing about laser engravers. I've spent most of my time in other forms of woodworking in the CNC world. But I've been watching videos and reading, and uh, we're gonna give it a try today. We're gonna see if we can set up um, some tests, see how it engraves, and see how well I can manage my way through the software Lightburn. Now Lightburn, has been recommended by almost every um, diode uh, laser manufacturer. And it's very similar to other software that I've been using all along, so it was quite easy to learn. There's a 30-day free trial you can download and experiment with, which is what I'm doing right now but I already know that I'm probably gonna buy the full license for $40. Um, not a lot of money for a, a lot of what it can do. So let's get started. So this is the Opt Laser um, PLH 3D 6 watt CNC laser add-on. Um, and it mounts right here to the side of the spindle um, on the CNC machine. And we're gonna go ahead and um, use the light burn software over here. Um, I hope <laughs> it's connected. It says that it's ready. Um, and I'm gonna try to do a few pieces of my katan that I used to uh, V carve with the CNC machine. And then I would uh, uh, put in some lacquer sealer and then I would put in black paint and then I would sand it. Um, I want to see if the laser can handle um, just doing the dark lines. Um, so the first step is to position it. So I've already homed it. So I am going to try to get it to go down to this corner and call that the origin. So I'll be back in a moment. So we're going to go move. And what is it set for? We're going to set this for 30 millimeters. And we're gonna go to the right. And we're gonna go to the back a little bit. And when I get it close, I will be back. So I'm just using a scrap piece of plywood and this is the, um, device to set the height on the z-axis to start the focus. So I am going to lower the z-axis to where it's just barely touching that. That's 35 millimeters. All right, I've got it fairly close. So now what we're going to do is fire the laser and see if how the focus works. So I'm going to take out that and we're going to go over here and put our glasses on. And we're going to turn the laser on. And when the, there, the indicator light moved over to the first spot. So now I turn on the laser. You can hear the fan going. And we're going to go down here to fire the laser. And it's set at one and a half percent. So it doesn't burn any wood. So you can see the little dots of light 
and that is nowhere near focused because it's rectangular. So I'm going to go down one millimeter at a time, try to keep the camera steady. Ready? Go. Now it's getting smaller. Wow. It's getting smaller, but I'm worried about the router spindle hitting the piece of wood. I got a few more millimeters to go. That seems to be a pretty fair size, uh, small dot right there. And I'm not exactly on the material yet, but I'm really close. So I'm going to turn off the fire button. Where am I? So that turned off the fire button. Now I'm going to set where it is at the corner. See, this is the corner down here with the green shows that that's the origin. I'm going to make sure and I say set the origin. And then we should be able to just start it up. I do have to say before I fire this that uh, up until a week ago or two weeks ago, I knew nothing about diode lasers. So everything I've learned has been from watching videos and from reading in the past week. So if I may make a whole ton of mistakes, I'm learning as I go here. So uh, forgive me, uh, if, if I do make mistakes, I'll correct them in the next video um, and show you what I've learned from that. But right now, let's flip this back. I'm a little concerned that that 35 millimeter measurement gauge was so off and I had to get so much further down to get focus. I'm wondering if the lens is in the right place in the laser. And I'm wondering why I get these travel lines burned in between these images. I'm going to have to do some research. So here's what I've done. I've set uh, four boxes, each on a different layer. The layers are up here. And with layers, you can change the speeds and power of what you're engraving. So I have box one at 6,000 uh, millimeters a minute at 100%. Box two is 4,000, 100%. Box three is 2,000, 100%. And box four is 1,000 at 25%. So these should get progressively darker and then should be visibly slower than the one previous. So I've set the origin um, to go and we'll follow along and see if we can notice the speed change and the power change. So here we go. the results of that test. This is 6,000 millimeters at 100%. This is 4,000 millimeters at 100%. This is 2,000 millimeters at 100%. And this last one is 1,000 uh, millimeters at 25%. And I must say, they don't look different at all. And I, I don't know how to get rid of this connecting line. It's annoying. So I got a lot to learn. I'll be back. All right. After looking at the light burn help section, I discovered a setting called white space. And so I redid this um, with just a few of my Catan images. And I'm in love with how crisp and clean um, 
all these images are. The, the uh, travel lines that were burning before are gone. But I do have one question. And that white space setting was in edit, device settings, and it's this one right here. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that fixed it because um, fast white space scan and I put in 5,000 millimeters. Um, I'm assuming that fixed it because I mean, look how good these all look. These lines are from a previous test. Don't even, I'm not, I'm just reusing the wood. So I have another interesting thing. While I was doing this set of bricks for my Catan setup, I went over here and I went to move and a, a screen came up that said increase or decrease speed, increase or decrease power. So I started decreasing the speed during this this engraving right here halfway through i made it slow and made it slower and slower and slower to where it was barely moving but the line size the burning line did not change at all so i'm wondering why that is um you would think that it would get darker and deeper and you know since it was still at a hundred percent power so um i still have a lot to learn but uh things are getting better so I'm going to end this video on a positive note. Um, I like the way this Optlaser works so far. I'm learning a whole lot of new stuff. I'm going to do more tests and start creating more content using both the, the CNC for newbie upgrade with the router and for the Optlaser 6 watt laser. Um, thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button five times. That won't help. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and then hit the little bell to let you know when my next video comes up. This is James signing off. Thanks for showing up. Have a great time.